Hello everyone. A very good evening and warm welcome to all of you who has joined for yet another episode of Cricketing Blues. Today is a very special episode as we are going live on Diwali night. I would like to wish you all a very happy Diwali from entire Bangkok Blues Cricket Club and Cricketing Blues family. We cricket lovers truly love the gentlemen's game or sometimes the gentle ladies game. But very now and then players get passionate, aggressive, and perhaps even unruly. The key people who brings back sanity and order to our beloved games are, you guessed it right, the on-field umpires. Umpires are perhaps the most important ingredient for a good competitive game of cricket. An umpire has to give several critical and key decisions during a game of cricket, which can alter drastically the outcome of the game. An umpire unlike players, can never have an off day. So sad. They need to be in charge of their concentration, their composer, their control on the players and the game every single day. An umpire's job can be lonely and a scary one too. To tell us more about this unique job, today we have with us someone whom we can describe truly as a living legend. Our guest tonight is Sue Redfern. She was the first ever woman to have both played the game and officiated as an umpire in the World Cup cricket match. She started playing cricket at the age of 13 in boys team and aged 14 played men's cricket. She was the youngest of her time to play for England at the age of 16. She has played 15 ODIs and six tests for England. Then she started second inning for her life and started officiating matches since 2014. Her first assignment was ICC Women's World 2020 qualifier in Bangkok, Thailand, which gave her first taste of international cricket. If we talk about the big tournaments, till now she has officiated two Women's T20 World Cups and one ODI World Cup. To discuss more about this unique career, which is umpiring, let's welcome Sue Redfern. Hi, Sue. Good afternoon to you. How are you? So, what I'm well, I'm well, thank you. So, what Great, great. On behalf of Bangkok Blues and Cricketing Blues family, I would like to welcome you on our show. Thank you very much. It's great to be here. I, uh, Thailand holds a special uh, place in my heart, being the first tournament I took part in for the ICC. So, thank you. Yeah, it's great to know that your second inning of your life, which is officiating matches, started from Bangkok, Thailand. Did you get a chance to visit places in Bangkok? Yes, we did. We uh, we were here for about three weeks uh, during the tournament uh, and we'd have a couple of days off between game days. So we managed to uh, visit uh, the Grand uh, Palace uh, and uh, the old ancient city. Uh, we came okay. in, in and out of the city. So we really enjoyed uh, our time and we were very well looked after by uh, liaison officers who were uh, given our support. So yes, we, we really enjoyed it. Thank you. Good to know that. Good to know that actually you enjoyed staying uh, in Bangkok, Thailand. So today I'm very sure that you will be giving us a very fresh perspective, you know, and insight about the game. Uh, so can I start uh, and jump on our questions tonight? With pleasure. Yes, please, Irfan. Great. Moving ahead, let's let's take our first question tonight. Uh, tell us something about your journey. So how you started playing cricket including your debut match, which where we discussed you took two wickets for 10 runs and played first ever World Cup in India, which we know that a lot of people, it's, it's a religion back there in India. So please tell us about your journey. Yeah, so uh, my, I, I, I don't know whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, but my dad used to play cricket and uh, I have one brother who was also a cricketer, a couple of years older than me. Uh, okay. So as a child, uh, growing up in the school holidays, we used to go down to the local park uh, and just play cricket. Uh, that's all we did, uh, just play cricket all the time. So uh, for me, it was a family connection. Uh, I played in my brother's cricket team, uh, played in, in a boys team uh, similar to to, to your cricket club uh, really in terms of uh, just play cricket and enjoyed it and then my mum and dad 
found a women's cricket team and it and it started from there really where I, I started playing women's cricket uh, and then I was identified uh, for selection uh, and was very lucky to be selected for young England and then uh, ultimately England as well so yeah my first uh, my first uh, debut was uh, we went to Ireland actually uh, to play in a European Cup uh, I was just 16 uh, and uh, yeah I played against Denmark in the first game and uh, yeah I got two wickets so I had a couple of LBWs uh, turned down which I still believe was out so uh, okay. that was my debut uh, but uh, yes and then uh, the, the following year it was the World Cup in India uh, so uh, 1997 so uh, yeah kind of like it was a great opportunity for me to get out to India uh, and uh, experience something I've never experienced before it back home in England we had a few people watch the games maybe a few hundred yeah. or a couple of thousand uh, but when we went to India for the World Cup and, and subsequent tour uh, we had crowds of 17 20,000 people watching so it was a whole different experience uh, really enjoyed my time uh, I've had a couple of tours in India the World Cup really uh, ramped up uh, the experience and uh, yeah it, it was great to be part of we unfortunately were knocked out in the semi-final uh, but uh, we stayed to watch the final that had uh, a full stadium at Eden Gardens so that was pretty pretty special to see that so that's that's great to know that you know you once you once you go and play in uh, in a bigger stage you're always very um, uh, very eager to perform well so how was your uh, journey um, like starting for the first match and going ahead and playing a semi final how was it yeah, I think uh, any cricketer will say that, uh, you know, you have good days and bad days. Uh, yes. You know, part of being a cricketer is uh, dealing with those bad days, uh, dealing with injury. So uh, I actually, uh, on my debut tournament in Ireland, I actually came home injured. Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, recovering from injury, trying to, trying to bowl yourself into form. I was a bowler. Uh, went through a spell where I really struggled with no balls uh, and my run-ups. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's what you train for and that's what you try and do. You know, you try and spend your time in the nets with your coaches uh, to try and, you know, work your way through that. And there were definite highs and lows, uh, yes. but uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. You know, it's it's made me the person I am. And, you know, I'm very grateful to cricket and very thankful for the opportunities I've been given. That, that's great to know that that you know even even after having a, such a beautiful journey people admire the and love the game of cricket so that that's that's so uh, good to uh, hear and always good to say that as well moving ahead yeah. let me let me go with the second question what we have for you today how did you end up in such an offbeat unconventional and the cool career cool umpiring <laughs> Uh, cool. Uh, yeah, certainly. I, I would say it's the, apart from cricket playing, it's the best seat in the house. Uh, you know, I, I feel very lucky that I'm able to watch some very talented cricketers and be part of some very special games. And, uh, you know, to see that uh, direct uh, in, in the position I'm in, you know, again, I feel very privileged and very lucky. Uh, I suppose I, I came towards the end of my playing uh, in 2012, 2013, and, and I really wanted to stay involved in cricket in the actual playing capacity uh, because I work in cricket as a full-time job but I wanted to actually you know be on field and, and and be part of that so my dad did a little bit of cricket umpiring I uh, had a chat with him and uh, we talked about whether or not you know, it would be something for me. Uh, I took my laws courses in my local county association uh, and then was appointed to a local league uh, and started umpiring men's league cricket. And then it pretty much took off from there very quick, really. So, uh, yeah, I feel, uh, yeah, I feel very lucky, I suppose. Uh, it was probably my dad's influence that I wanted to cricket umpire. So, uh, yeah, I feel very lucky that I'm still uh, able to kind of like take part in the games. As as you just mentioned that you started uh, uh, your your second uh, inning of your life, which is an umpiring actually, and it took off very uh, very quickly. Um, I remember a remarkable decision was taken by the ICC on 25th of November 2015 with respect to the ICC Women's World T20 Qualifier in 2015, I guess, where they appointed four female uh, umpires for this tournament, and you were one of them. So my next question is on it as well. How how was the feeling to start with the second phase of your life? Did you know that this will happen 
soon this soon in this your career uh, absolutely not. It was a total shock. Uh, so uh, I, I received an email from the ICC inviting me to come to Thailand to take part in the World Cup. And, and I honestly thought it was a bit of a hoax. Uh, I was very surprised. Uh, but uh, I have so much to thank ICC for uh, to give me that opportunity and to put trust in me and to believe in me. Uh, so uh, how, how did it feel? Uh, I was very, very nervous. Uh, I remember that first tournament. Uh, you know, my colleagues who were in that tournament with me, both male and female, uh, they yeah. were amazing, you know, because some of them had, had been already been experienced and had uh, taken part in tournaments. So all yeah. the processes and the protocols, we had an umpire mentor uh, that was actually with us as well. So all of that support really, really helped and made me feel a lot more, you know, a lot more comfortable. I think as anything, as a player and, and uh, anything you do in life, if you feel relaxed and if you feel comfortable, then you're going to perform better. And, and I think uh, the ICC really do try and put you in that environment and support you so uh, never expected to be there feel re very lucky to be given that opportunity but I feel you know from back in 2015 when that tournament was to where I am now I you know it's really helped me develop as an umpire so uh, I feel very lucky yeah that's great so so whether in right now Birmingham where do you stay right now is it favorable to cricket are you still enjoying uh, going to infield or what is it like right now Right now, today, uh, yeah. today it's it's very wet and very dark. So we are okay. in the middle of our winter, uh, out of cricket season. Uh, but for me, uh, for me, from an umpiring perspective, uh, the time is now the opportunity to uh, keep my fitness levels going, to keep training through the winter, to prepare myself for the new summer in April uh, when yeah. we start our season. Uh, and I also I'm involved in uh, helping and supporting new umpires uh, to to help learn the laws and, and the field craft uh, so for me you know it, it's it's about the off-field stuff preparing for the new season as you mentioned like there are a lot of uh, preparation goes on for an umpire as well uh, even even as a player i can understand we have to prepare we have to we have to develop our skills similarly i think it, it is quite difficult for you also to to remember a lot of uh, rules about the cricket is it like how do you yeah. remember so, so many rules yeah, uh, so so uh, the the laws. Some some of my colleagues uh, know the laws and the numbers off by heart. Uh, yeah. I can honestly say I don't know the, the every bit of the law. Uh, and I think what what the key thing is is you know you learn something new every day you go out on a cricket field. Something True. happens that has yeah. never happened before, and uh, you know you learn through those experiences. And you know kind of like keep keeping your keeping your awareness, reading the laws is is a critical part. But uh, you know for me. Uh, I, there are some areas where what I love uh, and when we're together as umpires you know we test each other and we ask questions we look at what's happened in matches we watch the TV just like you guys do yes. uh, and if something were to happen uh, in, in a game we we start asking ourselves what would you do in that situation yes. would you have given the same decision what you know why would you give that so you learn from each other and yes. you know that's what I love you know even though you are out on the field uh, you are a team so uh, yeah, it's uh, there's definitely a lot to learn, and and you you learn every time you go out there. So that that's true. Like uh, there is always a learning curve. It's it's keep on revolving. You you need to start um, wherever you start. You just need to keep on learning new things. That's true. Yeah. Uh, as you mentioned, uh, there are a lot of preparation. It's a very tedious job. You have to be a full have a full focus. So my ne next question is on it as well. How important is to be fair and consistent while officiating a match? Yeah, I think I think it's absolutely essential. First of all, you know, I've said before, I think if you're enjoying doing what you do and if you feel relaxed, you, you're more likely to make the right decisions. So putting yourself in that uh, space where you can make good decisions being in the moment uh, and, and being able to kind of like make sure that you just stay in the moment is really clear. And I think, you know, one thing that 
I want to try and achieve as an umpire is to, you know, be authentic. So, you know, be honest and, you know, just look at what the delivery was and make the decision as best I can. You know, yes, I've played for England, uh, but I've umpired England this summer. But whilst I've been umpiring England this summer, to me, I don't care who wins. What I care about is I, I do the right thing, what's right for the game. So, you know, key things for, for me as an umpire is every delivery, I, I say to myself, what's important now? I have to get my focus in the right place. And, and you try and make fair decisions and consistent decisions. So, you know, some of the things I'm sure as a player, Irfan, uh, some of the things that you maybe get frustrated about are wide calls and things like that. So you try and be as consistent as you can in terms of uh, those wide interpretations. So don't, don't you think that nowadays, uh, because there are a lot of technologies available for, uh, which, which actually sometimes help as well. But don't you think that uh, it is, bit rude to umpires like uh, it sometimes it makes uh, umpire looks bad in front of uh, so many viewers or something like that do you feel that sometimes so so my first uh, my first ever experience of drs was in a world cup in the caribbean uh, yeah so it was uh, in the west indies in 218 and uh, i was really nervous about the drs and obviously mm -hmm. having the ability for everybody to review my decisions and i yeah. think what's important is you know kind of like for me if i were a player now uh, you know, when I was a player, I wanted the umpire to make the best decision and the technology can help umpires make those decisions. You know, we're, we're human. We are going to make some errors. Uh, and I think, you know, as long as we, our processes are there, then, you know, we're, we're going to get some wrong. And, and uh, you know, the close ones sometimes go out, we sometimes don't. But what's important is our processes are right, you know, in terms sure. of that. So, but, you know, for me, I, I, I like DRS. I think it's good for the players. I think if, you know, there's a decision that needs to be overturned, it needs to be overturned. And, you know, you just move on with the game. I think what's important as an umpire is you learn from that. And, and DRS, yeah. you know, I think it's great because at the end of the game, I can review my footage. I can I can try and understand why I made the decisions I made. Yeah. So you can use the technology to help you become a better umpire, in my yeah. opinion. Great. You 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 earlier you mentioned about the preparation you have to do, like fitness level and the rest of the stuff which an umpire has to take care of. So my next question uh, is on the preparation side of an umpire, being an umpire. What type of preparation? an umpire has to go through before featuring in a game just yep, before so, like suppose tomorrow you have a match so how do you prepare for that match so so if it's in a tournament uh, it's slightly different if you're together as a group of umpires uh, obviously we've got the laws of the game but we also have regulations so each tournament uh, ICC have their own set of regulations as well uh, so it's important that obviously we read through those regulations to make sure that we are being consistent we'll then discuss with colleagues about how we want to manage the match and obviously to make sure we're consistent in the interpretation of the regulations uh, immediately before a game probably I like to be at the ground quite early I don't like to be rushed uh, so get to the ground, relax, have the opportunity just to soak up the atmosphere, uh, go and meet with my colleagues. Uh, we'll do pitch inspections. Uh, we'll speak with the teams. Uh, we'll speak with the ground staff uh, who are absolutely essential. Uh, communication with the scorers, understanding how we're going to communicate properly with the scorers. Uh, and, you know, basically then just get myself into the into my moment. So I do like a bit of quiet time. Uh, just before a match, just so I can control my breathing. Uh, I get quite nervous before a game. I actually, on the morning of a game, I might wake up and feel a little bit sick. Uh, but, you know, I think that's good if, if you know, kind of like, because I care, I, you know, I want to I want to do a good job. So, uh, yeah, so preparation starts, you know, days before, uh, but at the ground, probably two to three hours before the game, I like to be there. Uh, so there's no surprises uh, and hopefully everything's organised. Uh, that's that's great to know that because getting into the groups is what we all need as a player also we try to focus more and more but your part is not only focusing on the game making everything ready making sure that the game goes in the proper fa fashion or proper manner yeah. so I, I i i can truly understand how the the pressure the, the pressure uh, on basically on umpires are so my next question on your uh, 
errors and shortcomings do you ever share your shortcomings with your colleague after a game rather than keeping them to yourself and have to deal with them on your own later yeah I, first of all i think earth and i think uh, the most important thing is when you're on field particularly when you're in a drs game and potentially you've seen on screen that the decision was different and was wrong or you've had to yeah. reverse it i think the most important thing is as an umpire you can't make that mistake going well perceived mistake uh, turn into another error uh, so yeah. it's important you manage your emotions on the field and just you know what we call is what's important now stay in the moment you know yeah. keep your presence and and deal with every ball at the end of the game uh you know depending on uh, the type of game you're umpire in your colleagues will be used to doing feedback uh and i think it's really important as a team we do discuss the performance and you know we talk about what went well what didn't go so well what, what might we do differently moving forward so you know i personally like to talk about it i like to learn from that uh you know and and if something hasn't gone well you know how can i how can i make that better next time how can i make yeah. a better decision next time so you know and i don't think you know making uh making a decision which necessarily is seen as a bad decision you know we're, we're human we we will make those errors but it's important that we don't continue to make the same errors and you learn yes. from those so true so so basically sometimes it's it's get a, it's it's always good to talk to uh, your fellow umpires take their input and also uh, might be it certainly will might help you in the next games so that's what we have to evolve as a as a team correct that's what you guys also yeah believe See- even even though it looks as if it, on the field you're standing at the bowler's end you're on your own you're really not on your own you have a team around you and it's so important to work together as a team because your square leg colleague your tv umpire you know we've got, we're mic'd up and we can talk to each other and it's so important yeah. to have that communication and you know if you're there, there are games sometimes often where i i'm really busy and my colleagues yeah. Z or vice versa uh, and you know what's really important is you know if there's a bit of pressure on your colleague I would love my colleague to come like step in and and help me out in terms of whether that be emotional just you know saying you know come like just providing that little bit of kind of like reassurance so working together as a team as an umpire team is so important yeah that's great to know that by the way we we just discussed you just mentioned about the DRS um i actually have a specific question for on, on drs so let me uh, let me ask that one for you uh, what's your take on drs basically does it make umpiring look easier or more difficult does it make it look easier or more difficult i think you know yeah. I think what's great about it is uh like I say you can learn from it. I think sometimes, yes. you know, uh because because the technology it can all be slowed down, it makes yes. possibly decisions look a little bit simpler. Uh we yes. we have a fraction of a second to make these decisions and you you try and use every ball. It's not just about that decision. Every ball you do the same process. you know so for me it's about kind of like did i get my process right that ball did i see properly and then have i interpreted what i saw correctly uh you know so for me drs helps because then you you can like have a closure because you know if it goes to drs and you can see you've made an error or you've made a correct decision then it gives you the the confidence or you you can learn from it so yeah. you know for me it it can like make some parring a little bit easier because yes. you can learn from it but uh maybe to the audience it might look as if umpiring is a little bit easier than what it is i don't know maybe ask the audience that i'm not sure okay i i understand that sometimes uh sometimes technology can be a boon or sometimes it can be a disaster for uh for a person so it it's exactly the same way you you learn sometimes and also sometimes it looks uh, it makes you look bad on front of uh, many viewers that if there was a easy decision which could have been given an out but it looked like a drs helped here so i totally understand your point uh, so we all know how difficult a job an umpiring is correct so my question on a lighter note because you might have uh, uh, faced this many times uh, do you recollect any funny moment or incident while officiating in women's world cup recently or anything which came to your mind comes to your mind now 
Yeah, there's there's been plenty of times where both as a player and as an umpire, things have happened. Uh, had a couple of occasions where uh, we've had to stop the game and we've had to take shelter. We've had to immediately drop to the floor because a swarm of bees would be coming over the pitch. So, uh, you know, kind of like we, we had to stop the game because obviously we're in danger from bees. Uh, I had an incident, uh, actually it was in uh, Sri Lanka a couple of years ago where uh, the bo- I was at the bowler's end and uh, a fielder threw it in and just instinct from an ex-player I suppose I I almost picked the ball up on the overthrow as the umpire so you know just little silly things like that which are uh, kind of like a little bit daft but uh, in a league game in in a club game back in England uh, I was feel I was umpiring at square leg and uh, I actually caught Catherine Brunt uh, at square leg as the umpire the ball came towards me instinct was to catch the ball uh, and, and I was like what do I do next uh, I just dropped the ball and I wasn't sure what to do so just silly things like that and uh, you know kind of like the you know sometimes incidents happen and you you know you can't help but smile uh, sometimes you have to keep a straight face as an umpire and uh, you know some of the games sometimes things happen uh, a couple of times where uh, nobody's appealed on the cricket field and you know it you're going to give it out if someone was to appeal but nobody's yeah. appealed so you've got to try and keep this straight face because you know okay. it's not my job to tell anybody that you know you should be appealing so uh you know okay. things like that you're looking at your colleague and you're like did you hear that and and they're going yep there's no appeal yes. and you're no just like okay oh. let's go carry on with the game until okay. somebody appeals so just just silly things like that really is that happened ever like no appeal but you uh gave it out is that is that ever happened no uh i haven't given it out but i you know if it i'd have known i would have given it out if okay. there'd have been an appeal so there's been a couple of occurrences i had a court behind and there was a run out uh okay. where both times i was very confident that the decision would have been out but you know uh nobody appealed so the game just went on uh very strange it's very because as an umpire you know it's very hard because you know you're going to give it out and you and you're just waiting so uh that is very difficult okay for my next question moving ahead uh, i have a very special video to show it to you then i'll ask my next question to you let me play that video for you perfect finds the outside edge the pace on that ball oh wonderful stop that's not a ganchantam that's our entry into the geo women's t20 league challenge wow look at that for an effort from chantam and late on that jamima wow that's phenomenal effort brilliant she's definitely saved couple of runs here one a few hearts just have a look on the entire dugout of blue they were all mesmerized by that effort top class effort So what would you like to say about this video that's not my question but I just want to hear from you first so uh, this is just so great and and I feel uh, so proud of kind of like where Thailand uh, international players uh, have come from so when I first met Thailand uh, back in 2015 to qualify in the qualifying tournament in D- in Dundee in 2020 uh, 19 sorry in 2019 the 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 girls have come on so much in terms of they've learned so much in such a small space of time and uh chantham uh playing in the women's ipl uh it's it's brilliant i think it's the most uh, the the best thing in women's cricket is to obviously kind of like grow the game and get players playing in in tournaments uh, like this and and that piece of fielding was world class it's one of the best pieces of fielding i've seen men or women uh you know it's a 100% commitment which you know if i if i were to describe what the thailand women's cricket team were like on a field a uh, 100% commitment willing to learn and willing to kind of like put their body on the line i mean you know she really risked injury to stop that ball yes. and you know, that's the commitment if i were a team captain that's absolutely what i would want to see from my players so i i just thought it was an amazing piece of fielding 
that's true my next question i think the girls if the thailand girls are listening this or whenever i'll play it for them uh, they will be very happy hearing these words from you uh, my next question is for thailand women's team as well uh, you are in field you were in field for thailand women's qualifying matches for world cup what do you want to tell all of us about thailand women's team because you have seen them closer very closer actually how much do you yeah. rate them yeah. if you compare them with other nations Yep. So, so like I say, you know, I first met the Thailand women's team in 2015. Umpired yeah. a few games uh, in that time, uh, culminating in the 2019 qualifiers for the World Cup for Australia World Cup that took place in February March. And, yeah. and the the difference uh, in such a short space of time, how much they've learnt uh, and you know developed as individuals and as a team, I think has just been incredible. And I think you know some people may not. know that uh, Dundee was a very difficult tournament uh, because it, the the weather conditions uh, were really poor uh so it was very cold it was very wet uh, there was a lot of rain delays uh and probably temperature wise it was something that Thailand wouldn't ordinarily play cricket in uh, and I, you know the girls came out uh, when asked uh, they came out with smiles on their faces and just wanted to play cricket and when they played cricket uh you know they deserved to qualify 100% they were one of the best teams in that qualifying tournament uh, the game which i think really turned for them was when they beat Ireland uh, and then obviously the se- the semi the semi final which was the determination of whether they would qualify was against Papua New Guinea but the the, but yeah. the group match where yeah. they put themselves in a position to play Papua New Guinea in the semi final was was the game really they deserved yeah. Ireland would probably have been favorites going into that game and Thailand just outperformed Ireland uh there were there was an incident in Dundee where uh, I was a fourth umpire so uh, it was a rain delay uh, and it was incredibly cold and I had to uh, I had to ask Thailand to be ready to take the field again and uh, okay. you know I just felt really sorry for them because the weather was just it was so cold it, it, even I was really cold and I'm used to cold weather oh. So yeah. uh top respect for the Thailand team they they approach every game with a smile on their face uh they learn every game they develop uh and uh, they they deserved uh, to be at the World Cup and and they made an impact in the World Cup uh you know that last game which was unfortunately rain affected against Pakistan uh you know they they played really really well in that game in that innings uh and I'm sure Uh, they would have potentially won that game uh, against Pakistan yeah. uh, had the weather not intervened so you know uh, i really hope they enjoyed their time i wasn't actually in a venue with them in the world cup in australia uh, but uh, i hope they you know enjoyed that time and yeah they deserve to be there and and they've just developed and improved year on year great to know that and and you you have highlighted very interesting point which which we as an thailand cricketers are not aware of uh that how difficult uh was the condition for thailand women when they went for a qualifier match so i think we all should appreciate their hard work and they are still doing Definitely. very they, they they are actually very hard working they every time we see them coming up on the field regularly practicing and the coaches are actually working hard with them so uh, we can understand where where they are actually is just because of their hard work and the skill set what they have right now moving ahead uh, let's let's let let's go ahead with next question on your favorite thing what that is umpiring are good umpires born or made simon tofel actually says that to be a good umpire you need to be a good good person do you agree on that well I, i'm not going to disagree with simon tofel but i don't yeah. know i don't know if i'm a good person or not but what what i try and do to approach umpiring is you know you have to be yourself you have to try and bring yourself uh, to the field yeah. because the more authentic you can be and the more you can be you the better yes. your performances are going to be so True. you know I, i don't know if i'm a good person or not but uh, you know the the key thing is you know i think as an umpire you have to learn uh, and every game uh, is a learning game for me every time you go on that field you learn something new and if you're open to learning and adapting and learning from colleagues i think it improves you as an umpire true true so that's that's uh, that's uh, actually a very good thing you just mentioned that you just need to be 
if you want to be a better and better you just need to keep working hard on on it whatever you do so i think so even yeah. if you are focused on your job you will achieve success that's what it is correct okay that's great yeah um, you can only control what you can only control what you're in control of so yeah. if i you know try and continue to kind of like improve my performances improve me and learn from my experiences yeah. then you know the rest of it should take care of itself uh, but you have yeah. to you know for me you know two things enjoy what you do uh, and you know be authentic in how you do it yes that's true so yeah. let's let's move ahead and take on next question how much it, did it hurt when you got decisions wrong did it affect you for the rest of the match or rest of the day yeah so uh, a couple of years ago i made uh, some really i had a really poor match uh, and made a couple of really poor decisions and, and i think at that point uh, it did affect me and it did affect me for the rest of the match and i think you know what i've learned from that uh, and i actually employed a sports psychologist to help me uh, and i think what i learned from that is you know how to stay in the moment how to deal with those errors uh, and how to keep you know keep my keep my faith really how to keep uh, you know my confidence uh, that one bad decision doesn't make me a bad umpire uh, and, and basically stay in the moment so and i think this year you know i had a decision overturned in the women's international games and i think i dealt with that much better because of that support and what i've done to come kind of like prepare for that so you know you just park it and you can't you know you've made a you've made a bad decision but the key thing is stay in the moment don't turn that into another bad decision and and learn from it at the end of the game park it until the end of the game review it and understand why you've made the mistakes but uh, yeah i think that's the key thing staying in the moment in the game of cricket not dwelling on what's happened or what decision you've made uh, which sounds easy but it really isn't easy uh, you know different people have different techniques uh, i know what my tactics are and i feel quite confident you know i'm better at staying in the moment now than what i was do you think that's a switch on switch off mode sort of thing you just need to go ahead, you even if you are not um uh, Hundred percent on that particular day, you have to be switch on. You have to be on switch on mode. Is it like that sometimes? Yeah, and and also as well, kind of like there are some games where you know, as an umpire, you're you're just not in the game. You know, yeah. there's no decisions. The game is just moving forward at a pace. Nothing is happening, and then they're the games that are probably the most dangerous for an umpire because then something is happening, and if you're not ready for it, you can make yeah. a mistake really easy. So, uh, you know, I think what is important, you know, 2020 happened so quickly. you know it's an hour and a half and and pretty much it's bang 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 whereas in yeah. longer formats of the game because we umpire across different formats you know there is more time there's more downtime so what's important there is you you can have moments when you switch off but not yeah. switch off but turn down so you can like you know it's not high intensity you're not focusing as intense as what you would be so yeah. you know it's important that you get your timings right uh, of when you know you've got high intensity concentration versus you know less concentration if that makes sense yeah i understand your point okay uh, so let's let's say that people wants to do umpiring if they are interested on this particular side aspect of the game so my next question would be on that point what can be done to encourage more people to take up umpiring yeah i th- i think uh, a couple of things really visibility is is key and i think this is where the icc have done an amazing job uh, to to put faith in the four female officials at that original tournament qualifier tournament having that visibility of of people who uh, you know who perception is that umpiring is a is a male dominated role uh and we need to break that perception we need to show that actually there are female officials out there there are you know come kind of like myself and and a couple of my female colleagues all have very different backgrounds i'm a player but just yeah. being a player doesn't mean i'm going to be able to umpire whereas i've got a colleague who never played cricket and you know she's she's a great umpire you know so i think what's important is sharing those stories and and having that visibility of female officials to show that actually you can be a, you can 
take part in a role in cricketing, you know, which ordinarily you don't see, you know. So having that visibility, promoting more that, you know, cricket umpiring is is a genuine route and a career for a variety of people. It doesn't have to be ex-male players. It can be a variety of people who, who can umpire. True. That's true. Uh, yeah, like just you need more and more people to be aware of it on what needs to be done how you yeah. if you are interested in that particular job how you can move ahead but do you also think that there is also a, a cricket body uh, help is always required because i have seen cricket association of thailand many times they keep on offering uh, a lot of uh, individuals uh, refresher courts for umpiring uh, the scoring mm -hmm. and all those sort of things so i think uh, getting people aware is also one important point which uh, we have to make it correct yeah i absolutely agree with you Ethan. and you know to get into umpiring as well particularly for some women uh, having female only courses in some areas does work because sometimes yeah. women are less confident uh, in taking part uh, because yeah. they might have less experience in cricketing you know so having female only environments can help get more women involved in officiating in some areas true 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 okay Let's move ahead and take another question. I have a couple of questions left, actually. So do you think cricket is still a gentleman's game? Very important question. <laughs> uh, depends, really, what you mean by gentleman's game. So uh, obviously, you know, kind of like, I think what you mean there is about spirit of the game and how it is played. So uh, from, from my perspective, I think, you know, cricket... I, I've always I've always played cricket and been around people who've taught me how to play cricket properly. So making sure that we respect decisions, that we play in a way that is competitive but fair. And I think, you know, for me, that's that's important. So regardless of being male or female playing the game, how you play it and how you show your competitiveness, I think is very important. And Thailand women do that amazingly. You know, they respect decisions and they just play the game uh, through enjoyment and respect their opponents. Uh, so, so yeah, that, that for me is, you know, kind of like important that we remember where the game's roots are. Uh, and remember to play the game in accordance with fair play uh, and respect. So yeah, yeah, because because recently we have seen many instances happening where uh, the people are taking undue advantage of uh, um, cheating and all those stuff. So I, sometimes you might feel that people that the game of cricket is still not a gentleman's game of cricket. It's, it's getting uh, people are taking it down some somewhere down the line. So I, I think it's important we continue to play, you know, play hard, but play fair is something that I think is really important. True. An important question. Last question from my end uh, for today. What is your future plan? <laughs> uh, so, so for me, it's about uh, keep learning, keep, uh, keep my fitness going, uh, keep improving my understanding of the laws, keep testing myself. Uh, and yeah, just the next game is the next important thing, really. So not looking too far in the future, just performing uh, in every opportunity which I'm given. So, you know, kind of like it's important that, you know, every game you give your best and, and you try your best and, and hopefully, you know, your performances are good. So for me, that's my future plan to, you know, take, take uh, every opportunity and try and make the best of it. True. So, uh, we are going towards end of the show. Now I have a couple of uh, uh, rapid fire questions for you. So thanks for uh, answering all the questions. Now let's oh, go you. to our fun section and we will have a rapid fire questions. Are you ready to take on these questions? I think so. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> the best batsman or a batter you have witnessed from 22 yards? Uh, best best batter, best innings uh, was World Cup uh, in Bristol in 2017. Uh, it was Sri Lanka women versus Australia women. Uh, Sri Lanka batted first. Sharmani Atapattu uh, scored an unbelievable 160 odd not out. Uh, it was an incredible innings. Considering uh, there was a few wickets lost early, uh, she continued through the innings uh, and just batted beautifully against world class bowlers. Uh, unfortunately. Meg Lanning went on to get a, a, a hundred and win the game for Australia, but Charmaine Atapattu okay. was definitely uh, one of the most destructive batters I've seen in women's cricket. Yeah. 
Wow, that's so great. Uh, we have seen her playing in World T20 as well. Women's World T20. Yes, yeah. correct. Favorite cricket yeah. ground to officiate? Uh, favorite cricket ground to officiate. Uh, favorite ground to play on. Uh, so I played a couple of test matches at uh, Worcestershire uh, in England. Uh, so for me, that was one of my favorite grounds uh, to play on. Uh, to officiate, oh, I'd have to say I actually really like Bristol. Uh, I've I've umpired there a few times uh, and I've really enjoyed it. So probably Bristol to officiate. Bristol. Okay. Okay. Most yeah. memorable match you have officiated any memorable match? Uh, so uh, a couple of games really uh, took part in the uh, women's, uh, the first women's care, well, I, Care Super League, uh, which is the domestic equivalent of the uh, IPL, the women's IPL or the women's Big Bash. Uh, I took part in the final uh, a few seasons ago. So that was a really special uh, moment for me to, to stand with colleagues in a Care Super League final. Uh, I would say, uh, obviously, standing uh, in uh, World Cups, uh, that, that for me has been quite special uh, and feel very privileged. Uh, and uh, there was an occurrence where myself and Jackie Williams, uh, another female official from the West Indies, uh, we stood together in the first ICC uh, women's, uh, well, sorry, we were, we were in an ICC tournament and it was a men's international uh, and we stood together as two female officials, which was the first time ever ICC women, uh, men's international had two female officials on field. So I feel quite privileged that I was part of that. Well, that's great. One person to bat for your life. Bat for my life. Oh, heavens. Uh, so I'd probably have to say, uh, reluctantly have to say Meg Lanning. Uh, okay. Just, just you know, she is a machine. Uh, she uh, has shown year after year, match after match, that she can deliver. She, you know, she's got very few... Uh, weaknesses uh, and she's very determined and very gritty in terms of batting so uh, yeah probably probably Meg Lanning. Okay that's great. Our favorite food? Uh, favorite food? Uh, uh, probably uh, probably risotto probably uh, so rice uh, probably risotto would be my favorite okay. food. Okay, that's great. If you're given a superpower, which superpower you want to have? Uh, the the ability uh, to turn back the clock and, and do it again. So uh, have hindsight okay. and be able to relive another moment and repeat uh, time without travel? making an error. Yeah. So time travel would be yeah. would be it. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Best advice you have ever received. Yep. Uh, so two pieces of advice uh, from cricket umpiring is uh, just go out and enjoy it and remember to be you. Uh, but also as well, do what the game expects. So when you make decisions, do what the game expects. OK, great. Favorite holiday destination? Uh, somewhere warm uh, and on a beach uh, with uh, lots of time to relax. Yeah. So my next question is, when can we host you in Bangkok for a visit? Oh, I would love, I would love for that. Uh, England has to come out of lockdown, uh, so uh, yeah. yeah, it would be lovely to go back to uh, Thailand and see more of Thailand. Uh, we we stayed for three weeks in Bangkok. It would have been nice to be yeah. out uh, in different areas and see different regions. Great. Describe yourself in three words. That's my last question. Oh, uh, probably intense, uh, silly. Uh, and uh, just a bit of a cricket badger, really. Okay, great. Uh, this is it from my end. I think I, I have to thanks a lot for coming on the show. It was great to host you. you it's, it's always very uh, difficult to get in people who are from different aspects of the game and uh, take their inputs, take their insights. And it's really helpful for us to improve as a as an cricketer and as an individual as well. So I would like to just Thanks from entire Bangkok Blues family.
No, thank you. Thank you, Irfan, for allowing me the chance to give a different perspective on cricket. Uh, and uh, for anybody watching this, you know, uh, umpiring is a great opportunity. If anybody wants to give it a go, male or female, you know, please do. Please give it a go. So thank you. Thanks. All the best for your future and be safe. And thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So we had today uh, Sue Redfern. Um, she is an ICC level umpire, and we have seen an, a quite a different and a fresh perspective of uh, a game. So I think a lot of people today are celebrating Diwali and couldn't able to join. So if you guys want to watch again, please have a look again. And this is it from my end. Happy Diwali. Good night. Take care.